Glory to God. God is good. He's good all the time. There's a word from the Lord this morning. If you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. If you don't have your Bibles, you can share with somebody who may be near you. But the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. When you're, there, when you're there, I want you to stand with me as we read the Word of God. And if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, at our website, GentileGreaterHarvest.com, we invite you to join us here at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning at 4121 Alfred Street here in the city of New Orleans, 70122. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 14 through 17. If you dare say amen. Amen. And the scriptures read, it says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, but to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as, as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, though at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Amen? Amen. Paul starts out by saying that I am a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians to the wise and to the unwise. In other words, Paul said, I owe a debt. I owe a debt to everybody. I owe everybody to teach them about Jesus. And my topic for you this morning is simply that. You need Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's a debt. We owe it all. A debt is something you owe. To the Greeks, to the Jews, to the barbarians, to the wise, to the unwise, Paul said, I owe you Jesus. Because we all need Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. He said, because he's acquired a debt, a debt of love for Jesus, and he owes that to the world. And I feel the same way. Because let me tell you something. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen? Amen. I am not ashamed to preach the word of God. Amen? You need Jesus. There's a lot of things in this world we want, but God is always willing, ready, and able to give us what we need. And we all need Jesus. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone that may receive the things that are done in this body, the way you live, whether it was good or whether it was bad, you will stand before the Lord. Knowing, therefore, that the terror of the Lord we persuade men to follow Jesus. It's our responsibility to give nothing less than ourselves to Jesus as a witness. And we are all supposed to. We are called to be witnesses of Christ. Amen? Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ. You know, and the Jews used to, used to see people back in the biblical days. A lot of the Jews used to see people as being a Jew or a heathen. Amen? The Greeks used to see people as being Greeks or barbarians. Today, we live our lives like that. Some people in this world only see black or white. Amen? But let me tell you what God sees. God sees the saved and God sees the lost. That's all God sees. Amen? He sees one who receives Christ and one who don't. But the question is, the Bible is telling that, that he who will overcome the world is Jesus. And he who overcome the world, except that you believe in the Son of God, because Jesus came by the water and by blood. And it says that, and the spirit that bears witness, because the spirit is the spirit of truth. Yes. Amen? Amen? You know, the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 5, it says that, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The three are one, the components of God. Amen? And let me tell you something. God could appear to you any kind of way he wants to. You know, that, that confuses some people sometimes. How could God be one God but then be three at the same time? God said it. I believe it. That settles it for me. 
I mean, because God can't be confined into the spaces that we are in. You know, God is not the human we are. God is better than us, higher than us, smarter than us, more spiritual than us. And the Bible said that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. So Jesus came into the world to save that. The answer to every question you have is Jesus. Yep. The greatest need you have in this world is Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus came to cure the worst illness that we have. And your worst illness, like I told you last week, is not cancer. Your worst illness is not having heart disease. Your worst illness is not having diabetes. Your worst illness is not being paralyzed. Your worst illness is sin. Amen? Your worst illness is sin. And Jesus is your greatest escape from a route to heaven. Amen? Jesus is our guarantee. He's a guarantee that your soul can be saved. All it takes is belief. All it takes is faith. The Bible teaches us to walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Amen. People can fool your eyes. Amen? People can fool all of your senses. But we walk in the spirit and we walk and we walk by faith. That's all we have today. You know, but you need Jesus. As a matter of fact, in verse four and verse 15, it says, and so much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. Paul is now preaching the gospel to the people and to the church at Rome. You know, Jesus, before Paul did this, if you read sometimes in the book of Rome, you'll find that Jesus had healed a man. And he healed a man who had what we would call and what they call back then called leprosy. He had these sores all over his body, you know, and Jesus healed him. And when Jesus healed the man, he told him, he said, go show yourself to the priest. He said, and then offer to the priest the sacrifice, the gift of the sacrifice that was commanded by Moses. The sacrifice that he's talking about comes from the book of Leviticus. Some of the Leviticus law said that when a person was healed by the priest back in those days, they were supposed to go give a gift of sacrifice offering to the priest. And then the priest would inspect the person and receive the sacrifice and declare that that person was healed, free of leprosy. Leprosy was a very, very debilitating disease, very contagious, and every time somebody had that, everybody got away from him, amen? But this man was healed, and Jesus told him, go and show the priest that I've healed you. And the reason why he did that, because he knew that some of the Pharisees and some of the sects called the Sadducees would not believe the healing. But if somebody has a disease or has an illness and they're completely healed, then you go and show it to people, then now that it's undeniable, amen? So there's only other, two other people that I read about in the Bible that had the same kind of disease called leprosy, and that was Miriam, who was Moses' sister, and then a man named Naaman, who was in the book of 2 Kings had the same illnesses, but was healed by God, amen? amen, after a session. But then, when Jesus was talking to this particular man, he was talking to a Roman centurion. And this centurion came to Jesus, and he asked Jesus, he said, look, I got a servant who's sick at home. And he asked Jesus, could you come and heal him? And he told Jesus, he said, look, I'm not even worthy for you to come to my house. I know I'm not worthy because I'm not really one of your followers, you know, but the man had faith. Jesus said, I'm coming. Jesus said, I will come and I will heal your servant. He said, I'll come and do it. And he started doing some other things before he got there. But as the man stood there with all faith, he said, look, I'm a Roman officer. I can speak to men. I can give commands and they listen to me. He said, but I believe and I've got so much faith in you that I know if you would just speak the word, my servant will be healed. Amen. And so Jesus said, he admired that man's faith. And so he told the gentleman, he said, listen, we'll just go back. And by the time you get home, he'll be healed. The Roman centurion had faith in Jesus, even though he wasn't a real follower of Christ. Amen. But I'm telling you today, you got to stand on the word of God, because guess what? We all need Jesus. And God can just speak a word and bring a healing here. Come on. I know somebody know what I'm talking about this morning. Just speak the word. And I'll be healed. Paul said, I owe a debt to the church at Rome. You know, and I owe a debt to this church. We owe a debt to every church. We do owe a debt to every believer. 
Amen. And non-believer in this world. We need to preach the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what's going to save your soul. Amen. You know, as a matter of fact, Paul said, I owe a debt to the church at Rome because Jesus is Lord. Jesus is king. Jesus is master. And Jesus is the savior. You know, like Moses said, ask God, what shall I tell people? When Moses was tell, talking to God and God told Moses, go back and tell Pharaoh, let the people go. Moses wasn't sure that people would believe him. He said, Lord, when they ask me who sent me, who's doing all this, what should I tell them? What's your name? What should I say? And God told Moses, he said, tell him that I am sent you. Amen. That's all God said. I am that I am. And so Paul is using the same thing, you know, he's, he's acting like Moses to the people. God said that I am that I am, amen, I'm able to do whatever you need, amen. Don't worry about trying to be on a first name basis with God, amen. Just believe that God is God and he can heal, amen. So Paul was walking in step with God. Paul said, I am a preacher. Paul said, I am a debtor, and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Somebody ought to praise God this morning. You need Jesus, amen? And none of us should be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, amen? But some of us are, you know? <laughs> you know? Let me tell you something. Because some people, like I said, won't go to God because they're afraid what other people will say about them, amen? But you have to stand on God's word. And you have to walk by that faith in Jesus Christ. When some people think about the miracles that Jesus did back in these biblical times, God is still doing miracles. Amen? Today. Amen. I know that somebody here right now have made it through something you thought you were going to die. But you're still here. Amen? And let me tell you something. It wasn't about luck. God doing miracles every day. Every time God takes you through something you shouldn't have made it out of, that's a miracle. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all have been in accidents in your life that should have killed you. But you're still here today to thank God. Amen? It's not about being lucky. It's about being saved by God. Amen? That's a miracle that you're still standing today. I've seen people who have been involved in accidents. The car looked like a crushed can. Some of them stepped out without a scratch. That's a miracle of God. Amen? God is doing miracles every day. Amen? We got a little bitty baby that we're going to bless today, this morning, amen? And this little bitty baby, just think about a baby. You know, one of the things when you think about a baby, it show you, the, uh, that baby represents the miracle of life. Yes, it's a miracle. Because if I ask anybody, because how many people here could swim? <laughs> how many people, raise your hand again if you can swim? Amen, amen. Okay, so we got some swimmers in here. Now we got some people that can't swim, right? Amen. All right. Now, the reason why I ask that is the reason why most of you all can't swim is because you're afraid of water. You're afraid of water, amen? And the reason why you're afraid of water is because you think if you get in, you'll drown and you'll die, amen? But let me tell you something. Let me show you the miracle of life. You are naturally aquatic. You are naturally, what do I mean by that? You are naturally aquatic. Why are you afraid of water when you were encased in water for nine months? Amen? Amen? All you know as a baby is water. That little baby, before it came into this world, was encased in his mother's womb for nine months in water. And you tell me you don't know how to swim. You've been swimming for nine months. <laughs> if I ask you how long you can hold your breath, somebody might be able to go almost a minute. Some of y'all might go 15 seconds. But for nine months, you've been encased in water. But the thing is, when you come out of there and you learn about this world, you become afraid. The first thing you learn is to fear water. But you think about it, you're aquatic, naturally aquatic. But that's a miracle of life. That's what God does for us, amen? And then we live in this earth. 75% of the earth is water. All of your body is probably water, amen? Water sustains life, amen? And that's the reason why I'm here telling you this morning, you need Jesus because Jesus is living water. Come on and praise God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, amen? 
All you have to do is believe. You know, I'm not crazy, you know, but I intend to heed God's warning. Amen. Because the Bible says, and the reason why I believe in Jesus Christ, the reason why I stand fast on the faith that God has given me to have, you know, and the, because the Bible says that whoever, and Jesus said this, whoever is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of them before God. Amen. Amen. Because you're going to stand in judgment one day. Amen. You're going to stand before the Father, amen? And when Jesus comes in his own glory, in, in, in his Father's glory, with the Holy Spirit and all the angels and saints of God, we will all stand in the presence of Christ. And Jesus is going to want to know, amen. did you believe, amen? Did you have faith? Did you believe that I was coming back? Because let me tell you something, he's coming back again, amen? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he's coming back for born-again believers, amen? Yes, 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 yes. I'm here to tell you this morning. And, and Paul said this in the book of Romans 9.30. He said, just like Isaiah said before me, he said, except the Lord, because he's the, the Lord of the Sabbath, left us a seed. And we have been in Sodom and we have been like unto Gomorrah. Paul said that we shall say then that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained unto righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel followed after the laws of righteousness has not attained the law of righteousness. Why? Because they sought not by faith. They were working on the works of God. In other words, what Paul is writing here to tell you is that he's talking about Israel. Israel believes, and there are people who call themselves Israel today, they believe that just their works will get them into heaven. But the Bible says your works alone will not get you into heaven amen nothing you're doing as your work is going to get you in well i'm a good person i just do what i need to do and i don't bother nobody you need jesus amen yes, yeah and the bible says as it is written before i lay in zion a stumbling stone a rock of offense and whoever believe on him uh, uh, uh who believe not on him you know won't make it amen in other words the bible is telling us and paul is saying the same thing that's why i preach to the romans as sophisticated as they were, they were a stumbling block to Christ and his, his mission. Amen. Because eventually they're the ones who, who, who destroyed him. They're the ones who hung him. They're the ones who crucified him. Amen. Because they believe that. We are walking by faith in God. Amen. And we are saved by the grace of God. You're saved by grace, not by the law. Amen. And the reason why I'm telling you that is that I don't want you to get it twisted. You know. And back in those days, yeah, the, the, the law was a very strict thing for you to follow back in the biblical times in the Old Testament. Amen. The Leviticus law, there was death for almost every infraction of the laws. Amen. That's the reason why when Jesus was brought a woman, the Bible said these men brought this woman to Jesus. And they said, we found her. We caught her in the act of adultery. Well, they were trying to test Jesus to find out if he really knew Israel's law. Because he was a Jew like them. But they said if he's a Jew, then he ought to know the laws of Moses. And the laws of Moses call for a person when they were found to be in committing adultery, they were to be stoned to death. Right. Now, you know we ain't stoning anybody to death for something like that, amen? You go to court, you get a, a decree of divorce, and you're done, amen? You move on. People do that today. But in those days, that infraction called for you to be stoned. How do I know it? Because Jesus said it. When he was standing with that woman and those who were accusing her, he asked them. He said, listen, I know the laws of Moses. And I know that she should be stoned to death. But I'm telling you, anybody who's standing here that has no sin, cast the first stone. Nobody could do that. So they all walked away. Amen. And so when Jesus knew that her, her accusers walked away, he actually said, woman, where are your accusers? She said, no, son, uh, sir, they, they're all gone. They left. He said, well, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. So Jesus took away that whole thing about killing people for the infractions of God. So those laws were saved by grace, not by ourselves and our work. That's not going to get you to heaven. Amen. Let me tell you something. When you leave here, this is the only life you're getting on this earth. The way we're living it now. Amen. But when this life is over. You're going to get eternal life. 
and you will have eternal life one place or the other. The choice is yours. Now I know everybody in here at some point in their life, some of y'all young people, even some of y'all old people, who made the statement, I didn't ask to come here. <laughs> you mad at your mother, father, or somebody, well, I didn't ask to come here. Well, maybe you didn't. But let me tell you something, you had no choice in the fact that you're here. You had absolutely no choice. But you will have a choice now in your afterlife, amen? You have a choice now in your afterlife. The life that's going to happen to you after this life is over. You have a choice to where you will end up in eternity. Amen. Because you will spend eternity somewhere. Amen. You can spend it in heaven or you can spend it in hell because there is a hell. Amen. That's why I'm telling you this morning. You need Jesus. Somebody praise God this morning. The spread of the gospel started at the center of Judaism yeah the Bible said but when you believe you shall have power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you that's what Jesus told his disciples he promised them the power of the Holy Spirit and he says when the Holy Spirit come that you are going to be able to preach my word and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and to all the places of the earth there's no place on this earth where the people can say they have not heard about Jesus. Now, there are places on the earth where people can say, I've ignored the word of God. Amen. You can ignore it. Amen. Doesn't matter who you are, Jew or Gentile, the message is the same. You need Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible says it in verse 17 that we were just reading, say, for the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just will live by faith. And that's all you need to do, you know. That explains why the gospel is the power of God. As a matter of fact, and what was Jesus talking about when he said that the just shall live by faith? He was talking about something that had already been written. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, the just shall live by faith. So he knew the word of God and he preached the word of God. Amen. But two things. God is the center of all righteousness. God is the center of righteousness. Amen. And Jesus is sincere. Jesus is sinless. And Jesus is God's substitute for righteousness in the earth. That's the reason why he came here in the form of a man to take up on all of our sin. Jesus already paid the price for you. All you have to do is accept it. Amen. He did everything for your soul salvation. You know, your soul, your body, your spirit. Your soul is the thing that needs to be saved. Your spirit is the thing that connects you to God. And your body is going back to the earth from whence it came. Yes, Amen? Amen? I'm here to tell you this morning, Jesus made a way out of no way. Amen? And he did it all for you. The Bible said that he, made, he who knew no sin became a uh, sin for us. That we might be able to be the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about that. We are uh, followers of Christ in faith because whatever Jesus is, we become. Amen. We become the righteousness of faith in Christ and Christ alone. Jesus said, whoever believes in me shall have eternal life with God. As a matter of fact, and Jesus even said, he told his disciples before they became uh, apostles, he said, you will sit at the judgment seat and you will be the 12 that judge all the 12 tribes of Israel. The disciples will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. So that's, that, to me, that was something to live for and that was something to die for. And the majority of those disciples died just that way, believing in Jesus Christ and believing. And not only did they believe it, they preached and became witnesses for Jesus Christ. We need to do the same thing because we all need Jesus in our lives. Amen. We need Jesus because God is the righteousness. Because God's righteousness claim and has fulfilled and satisfied all the things God sent Jesus in the world to do. And Jesus said this, when you pray, when you pray, ask in my name, whatever you need, you just ask in the name of Jesus and you shall have it. Now, a lot of times when we pray for things, we don't get it. We stop believing. I'm saying this to you like this. He's not the genie of the lamp. You don't rub the lamp, get three wishes and everything is perfect. Amen. And a lot of times you might be praying for something you really shouldn't have, even though you think you should have it, you know. 
And, and, and a lot of times God will make sure he gives us the things we need more than the things we want. Every single person in here, I know at some point in your life, you pray and you wish for something because you wanted it so bad. And you probably even cried about it. And you never got it. And then you can look back on your life and say, oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that. Because <laughs> you, you can have what we call buyer's remorse. You know, but there are things in my life that I'm glad I didn't get. I'm glad I, I, I wanted it. And now when I can look back, because sometimes if you live long enough, you'll grow. And you start to look back and realize, I'm so glad, amen, that I didn't get those things that I wanted. Because I'm telling you something, even your parents and grandparents know there are things you want in your life you shouldn't have. You can't see it because your judgment is clouded by the want. But it's not about the want, it's about the need. We all need Jesus in our life. But let me tell you, the Bible, the Bible tells us that, that if we, God knows everything you need. God knows everything you want. Amen? He knows that. You know, he knows you need money. He knows you need clothes. He knows you need transportation. He knows you need a, a house to live in. God knows you need all these different things. But the Bible says that if you seek ye first, the kingdom of heaven, then all of these things will be added unto you. The kingdom of heaven and the righteousness of God comes in the form of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and everybody needs Christ. Somebody praise God this morning. Y'all, we're going to say this and I'm going to get out of here. You need Jesus. The Bible tells us that you need Jesus, and we need Jesus for every single thing in our life. God knows what you need the most. If you need it, uh, 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 food and that was the thing you needed the most and God like I said would have sent you a baker if you needed money and that was the thing you needed the most God would have sent you a banker amen but I'm here to tell you this morning God knows that you need salvation for your soul that's the reason why he sent a savior into this world he sent Jesus I'm here to tell you maybe you've been victimized maybe you've been mortified maybe you've been immobilized maybe you've been neutralized by fear but you got to learn how to take and replace your fear with faith. I'll take faith over fear any day of the week. You need Jesus. The power of God is not about the money power. It's not about position power. It's all about God power. The power of Christ. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. For your consolation, here is my invitation. It's all about your soul salvation. My obligation is to preach to every nation, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. One day they crucified my Lord. They hung him high and they stressed him wide. But early one Sunday morning, he rolled up with all power and glory. And he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm here to tell you, Jesus, the Lord of Lord, Jesus, the King of King, Jesus, the lily in the valley. Jesus, I know a doctor when you need a doctor. He's a lawyer when you need a lawyer. He's never lost a case. You need Jesus somebody praise God as it is written the just shall live by faith anybody got faith this morning anybody believe in God this morning come on and praise God this morning God is able somebody shout glory this morning somebody say glory glory thank you Jesus thank you Jesus God is good God is good and he's good all the time come on and praise him one more time right now let's just offer God a prayer right now pray with me right here in this sanctuary and pray with me if you're watching me on Facebook, YouTube at our website gentelegreaterharvest.com praying in the name of Jesus Jesus said whatever you need ask in my name and you believe it, you shall have it so Father right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we call upon your holy name. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. And I pray that every single person assembled here that hears me under the sound of my voice, however they hear me, but if they hear my voice, I pray that you will hear their prayers, God. And I pray that you will bring into their lives peace, love, healing, deliverance, and prosperity, Father. I pray that you touch them if they need to be healed, God. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, Father. Oh, God, I pray that the 
not only will you bless them, but bless the families that they represent, Father. I pray the same blessings into their lives, God. And I pray that you would touch every man, every woman, every boy, every girl on the face of this earth. Have us to come to know you, worship you, praise you as the one and only true and living God. The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. God, we need Jesus like we've never needed him before, Father. We need you now, Lord. And we ask for your Holy Spirit and your Holy Presence to just embrace our lives, Father, and bless us, Father. In the mighty name of Christ, we ask. Amen. Amen. Come on and praise God. Praise God. Before.